Beats of Rage was originally a fan-made standalone game that used a variety of sprite rips from the King of Fighters series and put them directly into Streets of Rage 2 and 3 environments. Its popularity led to it being moved to many platforms, including the Dreamcast, PS2, and even PSP. As the years progressed, the project's modular nature would see it morph into OpenBOR, an open source engine capable of creating just about any kind of beat 'em up you wanted. In this episode, we will be looking at some of the open BOR games that I think you should take a look at. These projects are all interesting variations of the games they are based on, or in some cases, something entirely new. I hope you guys enjoy Open Beats of Rage games you need to play. One of the more ambitious Beats of Rage games is Dungeons & Dragons The Rise of War Duke. This takes the elements you saw in the Capcom beat-em-ups and expands it further with a bunch of RPG elements, like explorable towns, item shops, an open world map that allows you to go anywhere you want, as well as an expanded mission system that is completely based on exploration and choice. This is honestly where I had expected the beat-em-up genre to go after the 16-bit years telling bigger stories and offering open world mechanics and character building. It still has the same great fighting mechanics you're familiar with, and the graphics are top notch. I have dumped a few hours into this and it did take me a while to come to grips with the setup and how to go about doing what I needed to progress the story. Once I did though, I had lots of fun and definitely want to go back and give it some more time. I ran into a few instances where enemies got trapped off the screen that irritated me, Otherwise, this is a great one to mess around with if you're a fan of Capcom's original work. Everyone knows Golden Axe. The classic arcade hack and slash beat em up is synonymous with Sega's success in the late 80s and early 90s. The open Beats of Rage project Golden Axe Genesis attempts to meld the story and characters from the original adventure into one brand new experience. This isn't your granddaddy's Golden Axe either, as there has been many modifications to the gameplay. At first you try and play it like the old Golden Axe games, and you'll get frustrated as your ass is whooped time and time again. Your strategies will need adjusting here, but the addition of four players really does add that great feel of an arcade game to the proceedings. It uses lots of art assets from the previous arcade and Genesis games, but also a fair amount of new stuff to make it feel fresh and interesting. The easy setting needs a slight adjustment to enemy health to be accessible to younger players. It's still overly hard, especially with enemies' counterattacks coming constantly. Otherwise, this is a good one to spend a few afternoons on to rekindle that Golden Axe nostalgia. Walking into this game, I had no clue what to expect. I downloaded it, clicked the EXE, and oh my freaking god was I blown away by the presentation. It opens up with a perfect rendition of the TV show's intro, music and all. The nostalgia feels were strong with this one, and I absolutely loved it. The feels didn't stop there either. Art, animation, music, it all captured the TV show perfectly even in the game. Side-scrolling beat-em-up action is how it all starts, but it expands to vehicle and even puzzle stages as you explore the overworld map. Not only does this allow you companions to play along with in single player, but the four-player co-op in place fills the screen with so much you can't help but be impressed. Character selection has all your favorite Masters of the Universe guys and gals, including Skeletor, Evil Lynn, Tila, Man-at-Arms, and even Battle Cat. There's even Lion-O from Thundercats if you want some more variety. The evil Hordak has invaded Eternia, and you need to stop the countless mobs from running amok across the land. Stages range from simple clear-everything-out designs, to challenging boss fights, to vehicle-based shoot-a-thons, to even mazes and time-limited puzzles to contend with. It's still rough around the edges in a few areas, but this was a great experience overall and it has come a long way in recent months. It's easily one of the best looking games the open Beats of Rage platform has ever seen. Grab a friend or three, 
and let this 80s classic consume you. Firing up Marvel First Alliance gave me immediate memories of my Captain America in the Avenger days in the arcade. It's very similar looking and playing to that game, has 4 player co-op, and includes a bunch of favorite characters from the franchise. This one is tough though, even on the easy setting my daughter and I experienced a ton of frustration with enemies shooting you off the screen, enemies countering you mid combo, and just being ganged up on in general. You definitely need some time and skill to adjust to this, and younger players will likely quit in disgust not long after they start. I was able to have some fun alone, but the difficulty is definitely tuned in there for multiplayer, and your first few times are going to see many of you taking a strong ass whooping until you adjust. Walking into enemies for easy combos just isn't going to cut it here, and each stage will need new strategies to deal with the mobs hellbent on your destruction. It's good stuff but not one for family night. Remember those crazy fun Power Ranger beat-em-ups on the 16-bit systems back in the day? Well, if you like those, then you're going to adore the Power Rangers-based Beats of Power Special Edition. 4 player co-op, a killer presentation with lots of assets from the show, and many characters from the universe making a showing here. Its Sega CD inspired full motion video sequences look so 90s it's perfect, and the gameplay ain't so bad either. You've got special attacks, combos, evasion techniques, and even platforming to deal with. Like most of these games, it's always better with more than one player but the single player experience holds up pretty strong as well. If you were a kid of the 90s and loved you some Power Rangers, the appeal of this one should be immediate and undeniable. It's more of what you loved about the 16-bit games, now with even more friends along for the ride. The graphics and sound remain faithful, and the gameplay simple and fun. It's a winner, especially if you have a younger gamer with you wanting to join in. The last open Beats of Rage project I want to tell you about is The Legend of the Double Dragon. This is heavily inspired by Super Double Dragon, the Super Nintendo game that continues the exploits of Billy and Jimmy Lee. It takes what is already a great game and expands the combos, juggles, and options to the extreme. Like the other games I have covered in this episode, you get a great quality in this presentation complete with new story segments, a big upgrade in graphics and sound, and the addition of new fighting styles that allow you to play this more like the original trilogy of games. It has the co-op you know and love from the series, and the sheer amount of carnage capable in this version is crazy once the juggles start. You can still play it just like Super Double Dragon if you want, and it keeps that game's system of power moves determined by the meter that's up by your life bar. This one is hard as all get out too, and you'll need to learn and use all the special moves and counters at your disposal. Fan-made games rarely reach this level of quality, and if you have any love for the Double Dragon series, you'll be hard pressed to find its equal. This episode is really just a plea for you to check out Open Beats of Rage in general. There are far more games available than what I've shown you here, and many of them are quite worth playing. They cover a huge variety of IPs, gameplay types, and the presentation of many of them are surprisingly excellent. The games I just showed you are all the PC versions, simple to fire up and run on any modern machine, 
but you can also check them out on a variety of other platforms. Check the description for links, and I hope you take the time to check out some of the work this great community has output. I'm Sigalord X, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.